Hello and welcome back to Mindspans. My name is Craig and I want to thank you for joining me today. I am in beautiful Miami and as most of you know or the new people welcome, I'm all about elevating your life experience through some very basic meditative practices that I've worked on for all of my long life and uh, and sharing that with you in all sorts of different videos and, and uh, guided meditations and other things. So, and it's really just about finding little things that you can do every day to elevate how your life goes every day. A little more smiles, a little less stress, right? So today is really an important, I talk about fear a lot, um, but it just, over the last couple of weeks and given everything that's going on in the world, I just think it's important to talk about it again and, and and fear if there's one thing that everyone should work on is getting over fear getting over their fears because if there's one thing that really impedes your ability to enjoy your day uh, it's fear and so I want to talk a lot about all the different kinds of fear and what is it all about and how can we start to sort of deal with our fears and I'll share some stories uh, of my own fears and how uh, I overcame some of those things or still overcoming some of those things. Um, I'm certainly not afraid of heights anymore, which I used to be. I'm up on the 37th floor here. So um, anyway, let's take a big stretch. Oh my God, I had a great day. I'm here with my son and my parents, and uh, it's a break from school, so we had an awesome, awesome time on the beach, and, uh, and it's just been great. And so I was, ne I don't, I've never filmed, I filmed here a lot, but never at night, and I was like, I wonder if I could get the lighting right to film at night. So I'm really excited that it looks good, I think. We'll see how it turns out. But in any event, so fear. So, it, I guess I was thinking about this quote where it's like, and here we are, like a little light sh opens up a lot of darkness. So if you're in a dark room and you even have a little bit of flashlight, it, it, it lightens up the whole light, the whole room, right? And then, you know, it's the same thing, like a little courage, like a little bit of courage gets rid of a ton of fear and a little bit of love gets rid of a lot of hate. You know, go say one thing nice to someone and it can really change their entire day. So, uh, so always do that. Be nice. And you'll be surprised at how, how much you can affect someone's day. So, uh, so, but today we're talking about fear. And fear comes in, I mean, there's obviously things that you should be afraid of, obviously. <laughs> like real fear. Like someone's going to kill you or whatever. And... But that normally doesn't happen to us. Uh, most of our fears are sort of imagined fears, fears of the unknown, fears of public speaking, fears which are sort of fears of death in any in many, many shapes. Um, and and then there are fears that sort of just evolve, like uh, like things like OCD or other sort of stress disorders that start off as as a fear and then evolves into a a pattern. Uh, we talked uh, in a video about a month ago. I, I did a video on neuroplasticity and sort of re rewiring your brain. So take a listen to that. It's a really good one. Um, and how you can use some really good science and tools to help rewire your brain. Because think about it. Whatever you're feeling right now, whatever fears you've developed, whatever, whatever that it may be, it's happened over the course of your entire life so it's work but it's really worth the work because every and it's worth work because every little step that you take towards overcoming it is like unbelievable positive energy and that helps to rewire your brain that helps you to move forward and to spiral up instead of spiraling down so I want to share a couple stories um, The first one is, uh, I was 
traveling and I got sick while I was traveling. I was overseas and I got really sick. I was in the hospital there uh, and it felt like food poisoning of some sort and they thought it was some sort of salmonella or something like that. And they gave me a bunch of antibiotics and all this kind of stuff and I got out of the hospital and I seemed relatively okay and I flew home. And then like a few days later, I got really sick again and this kept going on and it kept getting worse and worse and worse and over the course of a few months, I ended up becoming very, very ill. I uh, couldn't work. I uh, was sleeping most of the time in pain, terrible pain. Had lost probably 25 pounds. And, um, and I'd gone to the doctors, uh, many different doctors at that point. And everyone thought I was crazy, basically. They said, there's nothing wrong with you. They thought I was crazy. So that was a bad place to be, because you're like, uh, I feel really sick. And, and anyway, it was sort of like random, random, random occurrence. I ran into an old friend of mine. I mean, so random on a day that I actually felt normal. I'm like, I have to go outside. And I happened to run into my friend. And she said, oh my God, you know, she, you look like you're dying. What's going on? And I told her, and she said, you gotta go see this doctor. So I went to this specialist who's a, a tropical disease specialist in New York. And he was able to diagnose the situation very quickly as a uh, parasite, parasitic infection that had gone very bad. And basically said like, you know, it, imagine like you broke every bone in your body and you, it's gonna take a long time to heal, and, but we'll, we'll get it done. So it did, it took like a year to get over that uh, through a lot of meds and it was very painful and unfun. Um, but as a result of it, I really couldn't, I was so afraid of food and I was so afraid of dirt in my food and dirty plates to the point, I mean, to the point where I would put dish, dishes in the dishwasher and then I would wash them again when they got out of the dishwasher. So that gives you a sense of where this had gone to. And so the, the OCD component of it, it started to get worse and worse and like washing forks again and, and you know, throwing food out all the time and, and anything that looked remotely weird. I, and even all my favorite foods like sushi and stuff I would never eat and and it got it kept getting worse, you know, and I realized like there was a point where it's like I can't live like this anymore. I have to find a way out of this. And it was really um, it was my mom who actually was a a psychotherapist and, and a lot of reading and and I said I gotta just take it one step at a time and but I gotta start changing my behavior and not going the other way and I see a lot of this in people who have sleep problems also there's a lot of different problems that evolve like, like public speaking you know these things that build up in your mind over time and get you know you start to build your life around these problems and that was what was happening to me and literally I remember the first day I'm like I'm not gonna wash the dish I'm just gonna eat <laughs> from the dish that came out of the dishwasher and uh, you know you're probably laughing like but you can't imagine like it was like a big deal and it was a huge win for me that and I'm like well if I die I just because if I die I die you know I just can't live like this and I'm willing to take the risk of dying to get over this and because uh, that was my fear that I was gonna get sick again and I was I was actually dying probably wasn't even as big as the pain of being sick. It was really quite painful so and hor horrific. And uh, so little by little, I, I started making these changes. I wouldn't wash the forks. I wouldn't, you know, examine every piece of food. I wouldn't throw something out. If something was a little brown, I'd, eat, I'd force myself to eat it. Uh, and over time, it was maybe four or five months of doing this, you know, it's not, I'm not, I, even still 10 years later, I'm not 100%, like I'm still a little buggy about it, but you know, I eat sushi, I eat everything, I have no problems. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, I, I was at a client and they were testing an engine and it's a manufacturing plant and he was poured some water and he was gonna drink the water to show me that the water's real water out of like a industrial sink and normally, I mean, I'd be like, no way. Like, it would be like toast. And I was like, fuck it, I'm going to drink it. And um, 
So I said, I'll drink it. He goes, you're going to drink it? I'm like, yeah, I'll drink it. So I drank the water, and I was like, oh, man, I'm going to die. <laughs> but I was like, no, I got to... I, I, so every... I, so when I get chances to to continue to push forward on that, I, I keep taking those chances. And, and so... And it's just so empowering to get over those things. And it's really difficult. And I know, I know how difficult it is. Like, I really know. And, but you have to, the more you make those decisions, the more you can evolve beyond that. So that's a, a one kind of thing. Um, the other thing is I had a fear of heights. Like, I was really afraid of heights. And of course, my brother's like, oh, let's go rock climbing. Like, one of his friends got him into rock climbing. And I'm like, no way, I'm not going to go rock climbing. And, it, and he's really good at, like, nudging me through this. And, and it was really interesting. Um, as I got more comfortable with the gear, and this was over a period of time, and little by little, I'd climb a little bit and stop and climb and feel And then the rock from went from being flat to looking much more... Uh, with features and then the features became like ladders and the ladders became you know how could you not climb this thing so easy to climb and and um, and it was a really and you know when you look down 2,000 feet it's and you're hanging off the rock by a little bolt or two and some rope it's it's quite frightening <laughs> but and it's not like you ever get comfortable with it completely, but you start to re you start to sort of see the beauty. You quiet your mind, and and I, what I want to next talk about is that what is fear, right? What does it feel like? And because that's part of it, it's like you get this bubbling of energy and ex and, and anxiety, and that turns into anxiety, and then the anxiety sets off a series of things in your head that says, "This is bad, and you're going to get sick, or you're going to die, or you're going to whatever something really bad is going to happen." And it, it's in relationships too, you know, where you don't want to talk about something and you just build up or you want, to, you want to avoid conflict or whatever it is. I mean, these are all very common, common, common things that we all go through all the time. And the question is, how can you evolve to a place where, and these little changes, by the way, really do make a huge difference in your daily existence. I mean, I, I just can't stress that enough. Uh, just starting very small and celebrating each victory. Um, so the first thing, like always, when all I talk about is first you observe yourself. Because how do you change something you don't know much about? And honestly, a lot of these things have been building up for so many years in you, in your brain, in your body, um, that it... it it really takes a little bit of time to just step back and and just watch and take notes. And so first is just to figure out what's going on, whatever it may be, and, and, and to really feel the feeling. So you go into a situation, in my case, let's say it's food or, or climbing or other things, and you sort of get scared, whatever that is. You start to get that feeling. And, and try to really write about it. What is that feeling? And that energy, for me it's like this energy that starts to bubble, ooh, and it feels like nervous energy, and then it, it, it gets like uncontrollable, and then I try to control it, and the more I control it, the stronger it gets, and then it triggers all sorts of thoughts of horrible things happening to me, and that just spirals, ah, and they run away, run away. And, uh, and then not doing it makes it go away. And then it builds this incredible reinforcement, like, don't do that. And so trying to do a little bit of that, and your body is like, and your brain's like, no, you cannot do that. <laughs> so you really have to start slow and make little adjustments. And, and one is just to recognize the feeling first. And so as, and you know that feeling, right? The buzz and everything. And that feeling starts to come the first thing I want you to do is just breathe really breathe really deeply and realize that that's just energy there's those are chemicals that are being pumped into your body to deal with fear physical like fight-or-flight kind of stuff 
And so you're basically like your body's ready to fight for survival, right? So there's nothing to do with all this energy because there's no tiger chasing. And what you can do is just feel it, you know? Don't fight it off. Because you're just say you're not going to do it, all right? So we're not going to do it, but the energy is already released, so you're going to feel it for a while. It's like it's in your system, and it takes a little while to get out of your system. So first breathe, because breathing will tell your body that you're safe. Deep breath. Hold it for a while. Blow out everything. Do that again. Do that a few times. And... And, but at the same time, I want you to feel the, the buzz, feel the vibration, and feel it like as if you're falling into it, like you're bubbling in bubbly water, like you're in a hot tub, and that energy is bubbling through you and all through you. And get comfortable with it, you know? Instead of creating this negative attitude around that energy, get comfortable with it, because it's energy. It's really actually, that energy can be used and channeled and directed to do really amazing things. So they call it about good stress. The reason is because that energy is being directed in a way where you don't fear, fear, feel fear. But you're still feeling that stress about doing something and you're able to direct it. And in this case, you're feeling fear, but what I'm trying to get you to do is feel it, feel the energy, and then over time, not right away, but over, just start to get to know it, write about it for a little bit, and then over time, start to channel it to make one change, one little change. Whatever that means. Maybe it's eating off the off a plate that came out of the dishwasher <laughs> without washing it, or it's taking that first step up the rock, um, or it's raising your hand and asking a question in school, or raise or or speaking at a meeting, or um, doing a PowerPoint presentation. You know, it doesn't have to be a full public speaking event. It could be something small. You know, something where you're starting to break your boundaries and. And you want to take that energy and, and just move it in that direction and do one small thing and then stop and, and you know hug yourself and love yourself and say you know celebrate that you did that and little by little get comfortable with the little things that you change and then change a little more and change a little more and you don't have to make this is a very inner deep process I and you're gonna fall down a lot I mean so don't tell a lot of people like it doesn't matter what other people think it's your it's your thing you know and whether people judge you don't judge you who cares it doesn't matter um, it really doesn't so you need to find your own path you need to find your own way through this and it's a very personal experience and so I encourage you not to share it. I mean, there's some people who think that it's a good idea to share so that it's like, I mean, I think if you find other people that you can go through this with, that's a good thing. You know, having a support group that's all going through the same thing, that's really cool, but it's hard to find. And even if you find them, what if you don't get along or whatever? So if you have friends who are going through similar things and they may be different, but similar, and you try to do it together, that's sort of cool. But it is a very personal path. And it takes as long as it takes. And it may be a very long process. I mean, think about how long it's taken. It could be something that happened to you when you were a kid. So it could take 10 years to fix. But it's so worth fixing. I mean, the point I'm trying to get at here is it's so worth fixing because to, to be able to face the bully and it's, it could be a physical bully which, or an emotional bully or whatever it is um, I, I uh, studied karate from very early uh, probably four years old sorry, five years old you know, and, uh, and studied for quite a while almost 11 years, 12 years something. and uh, and I remember in my first tournament, the tournaments were supposed to be no contact. It was just like a stylistic tournament for points. And it ended up being a, like a full contact, kind of illegal tournament. And, uh, and every fight in front of me, the loser was getting 
taken off on a stretcher. So you can imagine that I was feeling uncomfortable. <laughs> and it's funny because the guy I was fighting, I was waiting, it was like two hours. We were like one of the last groups. And we became sort of friends talking all night. And next thing I know, we we're like, I didn't realize he's the guy I'm gonna fight. And, uh, and I was scared, you know, and I'd fought a lot before, but I'd never like, to, where I was like hit, like really hit. So the fear of getting hit, what that, I didn't know what that was. It wasn't like I thought I was gonna die or anything, but I was like, man, like this could be horrendous. And, um, and it's an amazing thing, like, I lost the fight, I, mean, I was tied for a while, it was a good fight, and then he kicked me in the head with like a backward kick, very fast. It's extraordinarily painful, <laughs> knocked me down, <laughs> out, mostly out, and, uh, and he won the match, and that's not supposed to be the case, but it was the case. And, um, and I talked to him afterwards, and he's like, oh, I was just fighting, you know, I was like, it wasn't, it wasn't his intention to hurt me in any way, it was just like executing the job at hand. And, and also after that, I never was afraid anymore. Like, it's like, I mean, of course I would be, I would definitely be afraid if someone had a gun or a knife or something like that. You know, but I still would deal with it. Like I would, I, that fear of engaging with a human in a hand-to-hand -hand way sort of went away. Um, and it's these little moments in life that allow you to elevate. Like the point is like, it's, we have this incredible opportunity and there's so many people live in fear of everything, like they're afraid. The biggest thing, actually, is that people get comfortable with their fear. It becomes like a, a mechanism, like a blanket. And they use that. They start to use it not only when they're afraid, but even just to get out of stuff, like to justify not doing something or not succeeding. And they turn the it takes on so it's like so dark and it's so destructive you know there's a, a there's a quote in dune and i i don't want to attribute it to dune it is from dune the movie the book and it says fear is the mind killer i'm sure that has i've heard that in many texts over the years um, old texts so where it came from i don't know exactly but but it really it always it penetrated my head when it you know, it is the it kills the mind. It, it, it's like a cancer of creation in the brain, and it grows and, and builds its own life, and, and has tentacles and all everywhere. So everywhere you can attack fear, you know, to release it, to try to a little bit of courage. Remember, a little bit of courage gets rid of a ton of fear. If you can remember when you're a kid and you did something that you were afraid and then you realized it wasn't that big of a deal and it like oh it was like a, all of a sudden you walk into a new world you know like it's a brand new world like all of a sudden this thing is not there anymore and it's like oh my god i have this whole thing and so really work on it one is to identify all those places all those little fears you know take note of them you have to do that because um, otherwise there's no way to approach fixing it and then start to start to tell yourself I'm not going to be afraid of this you know you start to have to rewire your brain you know your thoughts your heart if you bring your heart close while you're meditating getting very quiet and you really focus all your energy all your love all your heart into changing the way your brain operates you will see results and then physically manifesting those in the decisions that you make, the things that you do, little itty bitty things at first, just little changes, is gonna open up huge pathways. And so I, I really, I know it's a difficult journey. I've been through it several times, dark times. And, um, you know, quitting smoking, I mean, it's stupid, stupidest habit on the planet, right? You totally, you're an addict. And, um, but it's like, 
that little brain says like if you quit smoking your whole smoking life is going to be gone and like who are you without cigarettes <laughs> I mean it's crazy right but that's a lot of things like whether it's drugs or alcohol or love or whatever it is or work or whatever things it's like you create this whole e psych, psych, psychotic behavior that says without that thing you're gonna die or without that thing you're that part that ego dies and I don't want that to die I mean meaning I meaning the another part of your psyche but all of that stuff all those players those actors are not the true self which is what we talk about a lot like how do you access that so watch all my videos you don't have to watch all of them but there are a lot of really good ones um, the guided meditation is really fun uh, you, it'll really help you in sleeping and just thinking about things a little differently and um, I do a lot of work with lucid dreaming those are really powerful a lot of data now uh, talking about how lucid dreaming can really help you face and overcome fears uh, and it's a very powerful tool uh, to do that so first you need to learn everyone can learn how to lucid dream lucid dreaming is when you're awake in your dreams um, and then you can sort of uh, you can't really dictate everything that happens but you can guide it and you can ask questions and you can get answers and, and you can conjure fears and face those fears or they just come up <laughs> and say hi I'm here and uh, and you learn how to deal with that uh, so I do teach that too and I there are a lot of people you've all books on it and a lot of data now there's been a ton of work being done at uh, Stanford and, and uh, other very reputable universities saying that this stuff really works and particularly they've been experimenting with PTSD with soldiers um, and that they've found that you know being able to relive those experiences in a lucid dream environment and face some of those fears have been miraculous in, in, the, in the help uh, nothing secured I guess but certainly in their elevating what would be their daily life experience and, and in some cases it's been, you know, made it go away. So, so those, that's an area I do. I have a bunch of videos on that. And there's tons of stuff I, I really encourage you to read on that. Because that's also a great way. It's a great path to help uh, address your fears. It's so important. So, take the time. Um, you put a lot of energy and time into building your fears up and building your anxieties up. And, you know, a lot. Like, you probably think about it 70% of the day. So, if you just reduce that a little bit and take that time and spend it towards fixing it and shift the balance, that... And I think the other side is faster because you get so excited when you make these milestones and you just want to... You just want to jump up and down and dance and smile, so... And that is what... I want everyone to do is to smile more, have less fear, less stress, love more, and uh, and have a great night. Uh, I gotta head back to New York tomorrow. It's cold there, apparently, and um, and definitely subscribe to the channel, like the video, share it with your friends, all that stuff, and uh, I'll talk to you real soon. Thank you so much.